be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship as part of St. Philip's Lutheran Church, whether you are gathered here with us in person or if you are worshiping with us online, it is a blessing to have you as we come together as sisters and brothers in Christ around word and sacrament. Are there any additional prayer concerns that anyone would like to share this morning to be included in our worship time this morning? Then let us take a moment as we continue preparing our hearts and minds for worship. We worship God as we live our lives, as forgiven children of God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I put my trust in you. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. Remember not the sins of my youth. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we join our hearts in prayer singing, O Christ, your heart, compassionate, verses 1, 2, and 3. steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. 
when met by those in need, we have too often passed by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let us join in singing the fourth verse of O Christ, Your Heart Compassionate as our hymn of praise. continues with our readings from scripture. The first reading for today is Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 9 through 14. And the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all of your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you, it is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Word of God, word of life. God. The second reading is Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossa, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved faithful servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. 
so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Word of God, word of life. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. And I would like to invite any of my young sisters or brothers that would like to come up this morning. I got the stewards are there, Mackenzie's. It is great to see you guys this morning. In the gospel lesson that Mrs. Topham just read, she talked and talked about a story that Jesus told about loving our neighbors, which we all think is a good thing, but if somebody were to ask you about your neighbors, what would you say? Now, I know that my neighbors, I, the Reuters right there, I walk by their house all the time. So they're for sure my neighbors, right? And I walk by Darla Kimis' house all the time, so she's a neighbor. Who else counts as my neighbor, do you think? Now, you live here in Hastings, but you live on the other side of Hastings. So are we still neighbors? Or not so much. What do you think? Hmm. No? Yeah. But we're mostly neighbors. But we're mostly neighbors? Yeah, just because we live in the same like we live in the same home. Yeah, we, we live in the same community, so therefore we could say everybody who lives in Hastings is a neighbor, right? 
What about those people that live like in Vermilion? Yeah. Yeah. The, well, they're not, they say no, but yes, they are neighbors. Okay, so what about people who live on the other side of the river? Still our neighbors? Okay, what about people who live in Wisconsin? If they live in Hastings especially, but also. Okay, what about if people live in Wisconsin can still be our neighbors? What about people who live in Canada? Can they be a neighbor? Or Mexico? Or one of the many countries in Africa? Oh, I don't know. It's the less... If they live in China, that counts? Well, you know what, it's, I think for most of us, when we think of neighbors, we think of people who live close to us and people who are like us and things like that. But Jesus is saying our neighbor, a neighbor is someone who needs us. A neighbor is someone who helps others, whether they are near or far, whether they are like us or very different from us. Jesus says, when we, he says for us to love our neighbors, he says we are to be a neighbor to everyone, whether they live in Vermilion or Wisconsin or China or Africa or anywhere else. A neighbor who has a need, we are, it says, to love those neighbors. So we have to find out whether, yes? Oh, not California though, no. We have to have some of this. No. Yes, in California, too, because you know what? That's where I grew up was in California. So let's hope California neighbors can be neighbors, too. Yes, wherever there are people in need, we can be a neighbor to them, and we need to find out what's causing them to hurt and how we can help them. And that's what God wants us to do in loving all of our neighbors, our neighbors that are near and our neighbors that are far away. Would you sing with me, my friends? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you for coming up this morning. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Love means being a neighbor. That is what Jesus says in this story of the merciful Samaritan. The lawyer asked Jesus, well then, who is my neighbor? A question could only lead to volumes of argument. Criteria would have to be established and guidelines written you could never settle the question of which of all those billions of people out there are indeed neighbors. Jesus used this morning's parable to turn the question around. He made no attempt to decide whether the victim was properly a neighbor. Rather, he asked which of the three men was a neighbor to the beaten and robbed traveler? The lawyer had no trouble answering that question. Jesus made the issue neighborly love rather than identification of neighbors. Love means being a neighbor to people in need. It is impossible
to walk along life's highways without encountering people. You will encounter people in need, people who need help. The question then becomes, as in Jesus' story, whether you will be a loving neighbor to persons in need. In our smaller communities, we are very good at coming together to help others. Yet even as we help others, there are still many more who need help. People who maybe aren't the friendliest, who don't go to church or even socialize much. People who would be, it would be very easy to dislike if you were so inclined. This morning, Jesus is asking, who will be a neighbor to these folks? I have said it before, and I will say it again. When it comes right down to it, love is an action, not feelings. The text said that the Samaritan had pity, had compassion for the beaten and be bleeding traveler. The priest and the Levite passed on the other side. They also probably felt some sadness and compassion for the beaten, bleeding traveler. But love acted in the person of the Samaritan. A neighbor is one who does love's deeds to people in need. Love is an uncertain matter at best until it is manifested in action. Love is gracious. It is unearned. Love does not ask whether the object receiving it deserves to be loved or not. If you love only those who love you, what virtue is that? Almost everybody does that. Christian love goes out to those, even those you may have some reason to reject. Jesus said a neighbor's love should reach out even to enemies. The beaten man had no claim on the Samaritan. The Samaritan had no motivation other than gracious love. Nobody was watching. There was no applause or recognition to be gained. Social custom certainly did not require him to act in any way. There was no obvious reward. He acted out of grace. It was undeserved, unearned, gracious love that sent him across the road to help. Love ignores human boundaries. It is safe to assume that the man was a Jew traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Samaritan and Jews got along about as well as Proud Boys and Black Lives Matter. Or more appropriately, like Arabs and Jews on that same winding road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Humanity has erected endless boundaries against each other. John, would you switch to the next thing that I forgot to mark on my sermon? Thanks. Black and white, American and Mexican, old and young, urban, suburban, and rural, rich and poor. Christian love ignores boundaries and labels and sees only human beings. The lawyer wanted to make distinctions. Jesus would not let him. Instead, the lawyer had to admit that it was the despised Samaritan. Blech. Not the priest or the Levite. It was the Samaritan who was the loving neighbor to the stranger in need. Love is costly. It takes courage to love. 
Love may lead you into danger. A neighbor's love is always willing to take risk. You reach out to meet human needs and there will be a cost to pay. You frequently risk unpopularity. You may be personally attacked. Your only satisfaction may be knowing that you did what you believed in your heart was right, what God wanted. What a pearl world it would be if no one were ready or willing to take risks, to pay the cost for love's sake. Love is action. It is gracious. It ignores our human-made boundaries. It is costly. Surely you have noticed how the closely the Good Samaritan story fits Jesus. Jesus illustrates in his person everything he asks of us. Jesus illustrates this text by being a neighbor to us. God did not just feel love for us rebellious children on earth. Neither did God lift up a heavenly megaphone and simply shout down to the heavens, hey, I love you guys. No. God's love is acted out in the life and death, the words and deeds of Jesus. Jesus came to a broken, helpless humanity. God brought healing and forgiveness and hope. God brought life and love to you. Jesus was and is a neighbor to millions of us who would be lost without him. Jesus is God's love in action. Jesus' love is gracious love. We have no claims on Christ. There is no way to earn his favor or deserve his blessing. Jesus comes neighboring into our lives because he loves us. Lutherans have always made much of grace and it is good that we do. Grace, God's undeserved love for sinful people poured out in the person of Jesus is our beginning and our end, our hope and our salvation. Jesus' love is always, always breaking down hostile human barriers. Jesus' love went out to Jews and Gentiles, men and women, rich and poor without distinction. Jesus rejected no one on the basis of race, color, sex, or national origin. For 2,000 years, for more than 2,000 years, Jesus has been softening the hearts of cantankerous, class-conscious humans now and again, winning some notable battles among us, Jesus continues to make one body out of the immense human variety. Jesus' love is a costly love. The cross is the constant reminder of the character of Christ's love. Jesus knew rejection Hatred, brutality, betrayal, and suffering, and death. All because he loved. Jesus knew what the risks were in being a neighbor to a sinful, thoughtless, fast-forgetting human family. Nothing in Christ's example suggests that being a neighbor is easy. Everything in Christ's example indicates that being a neighbor is costly, but fulfilling and right. Jesus Christ tells you this Good Samaritan story today to invite you to join him in being a neighbor. You are the hands and feet of Christ. You are created 
to spend yourself in loving ways for family and friends, for folks down the street and to the far corners of the earth. Jesus asked you to join him in being a neighbor on a very personal level. So maybe it is to that elderly homebound neighbor, the wild youngster, or that store employee with a learning disability, or the aching alcoholic. Again and again, you will encounter a person whose need for neighbor love will be all too apparent. Will you walk by the other side? Or will you be a neighbor? Or it might be you who needs a neighbor. Maybe you aren't the, act, the victim of a senseless act of violence, but maybe the events of life have crushed you and you feel beaten and helpless. If that is true for you, let me, let us be a neighbor for you and care for you with Jesus' love. It is very easy for us to find many good reasons to avoid getting involved in the lives of others. We may rationalize that, hey, we all have our own problems, right? We really don't know how to help them anyway, and we think, well, maybe they don't even really want our help. And that's just for the neighbors in our own communities. What about our neighbors that are making all of our stuff in factories across the world for pennies a day? What of our neighbors in Iowa who are still grieving and rebuilding after tornadoes that were deadly last March? What about the refugee living in a tent on the other side of the planet where all of their earthly belongings fit in a single suitcase or grocery bag? What of our 820 million hungry neighbors across the planet where it is estimated that 36 million will die this year? How far does a neighbor's love reach? Jesus asked the lawyer and asked you, which of the three proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? There is only one answer, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus then said, go and do likewise. That is God's word for you today. Jesus has showered you with neighbor love, active, gracious, enveloping, costly neighbor love. As children of God who have received this incomparable love, we are called to go and do likewise. Go, be a neighbor to those who need you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join our voices in prayer as we sing, O oh God of mercy, God of light.
We are made God's people through our faith in Jesus Christ. Living together in trust and hope, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all those in need. To the prompt God of grace, please respond. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace, Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. Hope where there is despair. Love in the face of neglect. Comfort where there is death and healing in illness. We pray, O oh Lord, especially for peace in Ukraine and for refugees around the world we lift up before you this day, Betty, Josh, Harvey, Ellen, Diane, Linda, Alfred, Rod, Lynn, Cindy, all of those who are fighting COVID, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or other chronic or terminal diseases as well as those who battle mental illness in its many forms. God of grace, turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace, we thank you, Lord, for our sisters and brothers who have answered the call to serve in our armed forces at home and abroad. We pray that you would watch over them and guide them in all that they do and keep them safe. We pray for Corey Amundsen and Thad Amundsen, Brent Arnson and Lydia Sarda, Levi Evans and Brian Flatten, Thomas Kennedy, Megan Langenfeld, Connor Dougal and Jeff McDougal, Courtney Mulhorn and Connor Murray, and all those who are serving. God of grace, yeah. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I invite you to turn to your neighbors and offer a sign of peace, however that is most comfortable for you. You may be seated. 
we continue to thank and praise God with our tithes and offerings and are grateful for the faithful stewardship of those who gather here and those who gather with us online in our online worship. Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. This is the meal of God for the family of God. All are invited. For those who will be communing in your pews, remaining seated, I invite you to take the top layer off and to receive the body of Christ given for you. And then I invite you to take the second layer off and to receive the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins. And then in just a moment, we'll ask those who are serving to come forward, and we will begin by serving the center sections, asking you to come down the side aisle and return via the center aisle, and then ask the outside sections to come via the out, that same aisle and return via the far outside aisles. There is grape juice available on the center ring, and there is also gluten-free wafers available on a separate bowl on the serving patent. Come, for all is ready. Would those assisting with communion please come forward at this time?
Let us pray together. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. First, a couple of words of thanks uh, for those of you who took the time to put your name tags on. I think it makes a difference as we get into that habit of doing that. So thank you for taking the extra minute prior to worship and afterwards and in visiting. Um, also want to thank, we had a church cleanup day yesterday and yard work day, and we had several people come and put in hours in the morning and got a lot of things done, so very grateful for those of you who were able to be here and help out with that. And I'm sure there will be more opportunities as well. Um, also coming up, today is the last day to pay for twin tickets, so if you are looking to go, please uh, make sure that your name is on there and things will be turned in. Glenda will be taking care of that. She's not able to be here today, but uh, please do that if you would like to go. Also, we are still looking for folks who would be willing to help take a turn picking up our donut holes for our fellowship time after worship. So if you would be willing to do that, that would be awesome. Also, we have a number of events coming up a week from Tuesday. There is Drawn to the River, which uh, we are helping to sponsor and make happen, where Paul Oman is going to be doing a painting. You know how he did our painting here. He's going to be doing one about uh, Hastings, and it is for the Hastings community. It is not a worship service so much, but a service bringing the unity of our community together. Um, also in July, there is a Via de Cristo retreat, and if you have in liked the idea of exploring your faith and growing in a deeper faith and a deeper relationship with God, it is a wonderful event, and if you have any questions, actually, anybody who's ever been to a Via Cristo retreat, please raise your hand. Okay, talk to one of these people, but specifically, Paul Helen in the back is coordinating, and you're actually involved in this as well. Jenny and I are both on the team. Well, that is fantastic. So um, it is a, a very worthwhile event on your faith journey. And we've got a few other things coming up that you can check and see as well. Are there any other announcements or prayers of concern or anything that anybody would like to share this morning? Then I invite you to stand in body or in spirit to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us join our voices in singing, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Love your neighbor.